from Saturday Holland for you guys today and I'm going to go ahead and start off with a skincare product that I got this week and I purchased it off of the Sephora.com website and this is the Josie Marin Skin Dope Argan Oil plus 100 milligrams of CBD non-psychoactive is what it says on the box and it comes with 1.7 fluid ounces of product. There's only two ingredients in here and that is the Argan Oil and then the CBD Rich Hemp Extra Extract. It says on the box that it's made in the USA as well. Now there are two of these versions from Josie Barrett available called Skin Dope. This is the one that with the 100 milligrams of CBD. I think the other one says hemp on it. And I've been using this all week mixed in with my moisturizer. I've been using it with the Belief True Cream Moisturizing Balm at nighttime. I've mixed four drops of this in there. And then in the morning I mixed two drops of this in with my moisturizer. I also use the Josie Marin SPF 47. Uh, moisturizer and when I started using this I kind of cut back on other things that I was also using in my skincare regimen like different serums and oils and stuff like that and just kind of stuck with mixing this in with moisturizers and I've really noticed a difference in terms of my skin not being so red I have a really reactive fair skin tone that turns red really easily um, and I feel like that has kind of tamed down and my face has also feel, felt a lot more hydrated. And I do think that part of that is because it has warmed up where I'm at. It's not like frigid temperatures anymore. So that does have, you know, play a part in my skin being a little bit more hydrated. But so far I've really been enjoying this oil. I haven't had any breakouts or anything like that from it. And mixing it in with uh, my moisturizer during the day as well, I feel like um, the Dr. Dart BB Cream goes over it really nice. I saw on Herbivore's Instagram as well that they came out with another version of the Emerald Oil. They have the emerald oil that's currently on sale on sephora.com and they also came out with one with 100 milligrams of CBD in it. Currently it's only available on the herbivore website. It's like an extension to the website um, but I think that I saw on Instagram it's coming out. <laughs> it's coming out on sephora.com on April 20th. But the whole infusion of CBD in skincare products and makeup products is just really intriguing to me and I really look forward to what direction that's going in because I feel like even just trying this product alone, I feel like it's really calmed my skin down. Um, the Josie Marin SPF 47 has argan oil in it as well. Um, and I love that there aren't a ton of additives in this. There's only two ingredients, the argan oil and then the CBD in here. So that's pretty cool. So this is what it looks like. And there's 1.7 ounces of product too. So it's a larger sized oil. A lot of the times these oils only come in a one ounce bottle. And then my buddy Rachel recommended this commodity gold perfume. This is the 100 milliliter bottle. The cap has like a grippy feel to it. But but she knows how much I love the gypsy water from Byredo, like I could bathe in that stuff. Um, the one thing that I wish was more with the Byredo was it was stronger. I just want to smell it all the time. And when it goes on, you can smell it really well, but then it kind of fades away and you can get whiffs of it throughout the day. But sometimes I just want to smell it all the time. <laughs> so this here is kind of a stronger version of gypsy water. There's a, a resemblance in this fragrance to the Byredo Gypsy Water, but this has got a little bit stronger amber in it when you initially spray it. I feel like the amber settles down and I can't smell it as well after I've had it on for a minute and then I kind of get those notes of that vanilla in here, but it's a really pretty fragrance. So if you like the um, Byredo Gypsy Water and you too wish it was a little bit stronger, maybe go into Sephora and give the Commodity Gold a try. And then I also bought another one of the Sonia Kashuk Makeup Blenders. This is just one of my favorite um, beauty sponges. You can get it at Target. I think it's like seven or eight dollars. Um, it's got a pointed tip on one side that gets concealer right in this area on my face really well without having it go too high up underneath my lashes where my little eye rolls are. And then I also got another one of the Kat Von D number 22 press powder brushes. This is supposed to go in correlation with her powder foundation that recently came out. I haven't tried her powder foundation but I have used um, this brush with other powder foundations like the Pure Cosmetics or the Bare Mineral uh, blemish rescue and it's also good for like setting the BB cream and stuff like that it's a really nice dense uh, brush and I love it a lot and then off of Muse Beauty Pro I purchased one of the Danessa Myricks color fix 24-hour matte colors and the shade that I got is blackout which is the black and the idea behind this, and I almost bought like four or five of them because I thought it was going to work really great, but I was like, I better just try one, see how it goes before I purchase a bunch of them. Um, and I'm glad that I only got one. <laughs> so my intention was to use this as eyeliner to get a nice uh, wing, crisp wing eyeliner. I just like a really fluid product for my eyeliner, and I thought this would work really well because it is pretty fluid. Um, 
it's really dark and everything like that, but I tried to use this as an eyeliner and it went on nicely enough, but it doesn't set down solid. And because my eyes are so hooded, like if I relax my brows, that hood of my skin can come all the way down and like touch my lashes. Um, so it would transfer up and it, the longevity for me as an eyeliner was just not good. So that is just kind of a fail for me. I have another failed product. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Gel. Um, 0.155 ounces of product. I got the shade blonde and I thought this might be a nice brow to kind of define the hairs and spike them up while using the brow markers that I've been enjoying. I really love the MAC one. Uh, currently it's my favorite. Um, but this here is really, it's really goopy and it's like a really heavy product. Um, like I put it through my eyebrows and it was just thick feeling. It didn't look cute. <laughs> it looked heavy on the brows. And especially when I use those markers, there's such a thin, fine product that it's hard to even, you know, detect that product in your brows. So when I went over it with this, I was just like, that don't look cute. <laughs> I left it on throughout the day because I put it on. I was like, not about to wash off my face or whatever. Um, and it did break my eyebrows out as well, like a lot. So uh, I'm going to take this guy back. It was a fail for me. And then Michelle Wong here on YouTube referenced the brush brand Refer to me and they sent me over some of their brushes. I actually watched her brush video on Refer prior to, this was maybe I feel like one or two months ago or something. And I, I went to the website and I was gonna buy some of the stuff and there were quite a few sold out brushes. But the brand is R-E-P-H-R right there. When visiting with them, the whole concept behind the brand is to come up with the perfect brush range. So they actually have prototypes of these brushes that people can request. And I think all you have to do is pay for shipping unless you spend $15 or more on their website. They will send you the prototypes for free. Um, granted that they're in stock. Um, I had noticed that quite a few of their brushes are out of stock which because I had gotten these and I really, really like them. When I first started using them, they reminded me the most of Chikohoto brushes from the T range, which I have that whole range of Chikohoto brushes. It's the T, it's just called the T range. So like this brush here is the T1. This is a Chikohoto T1 brush. I'll compare it next to one of their powder brushes so you can kind of see the similarities between the two. One of the differences that I found between a lot of my other handmade Japanese brushes and these refer brushes are, is the bristles are a little bit more firm and structured um, while still being very, very soft. And because the bristles are like that, it's allowing the product to really stay in the place that you place it. It's not traveling very far from where you place it. So like when I put the blush on, it, I just go like this in little circles and it doesn't get too high and it doesn't get too low. And it buffs it out really, really nice because again, they're slightly um, more firm uh, bristles, but they're still really soft. So that aspect of all of these brushes is really, nice. This number four brush has been one of my absolute favorites. Like I really want to pick up a few more of these because I think it would also be good for contouring and highlighting but I've been using this for uh, blush and it hasn't splayed out. Like the bristles haven't poofed out. It stays relatively structured and kind of like I wonder if you can see just by going like this that it stays pretty firm but the hairs are still really soft. Another brush that I really wouldn't mind having a few more of is the P07C brush and I'm going to compare it to the Wayne Goss number 19 brush. You guys see me use the Wayne Goss 19 a lot in videos. I use it to buff out kind of above the crease precisely. Um, the, the Wayne Goss, this is a clean one right here. All of my Wayne Goss 19s are clean right now but as I use this, this does uh, poof out a little bit more than it looks right here. Um, this one I've been using quite a bit since I've gotten it and it still remains relatively structured. Um, they're both super, super soft brushes, but the bristles on the refer are just a little bit more firm. And this particular brush has a bit more of a point to it than the Goss one and the hairs are just a little bit longer. Um, but what I like about it is it just stays again where I put the brush and the product, it stays there. So just little circular motions and I don't get it too blown out. It, it buffs it out right where I want it, which is something I really love about the brush. And then to buff on my Guerlain Meteorite Pearl, I've been using the number, I think it's the number 06 brush, and I'm going to compare it to the Chikahoto T1 brush because you can see if you look in the ferrules where the ferrules meet the hair, look at how similar that looks. They really remind me of the Chikahoto T series brushes. The handles on the refer brushes are longer than the Chikahoto T line, but uh, the difference in these two brushes 
are the Chikahoto T1 tapers, uh, starts to taper sooner than the Ruffer 6 brush. So the, the Ruffer brush starts to taper right about here and it goes around and then the, the T1 starts to taper down here. So this one's a little bit more tapered um, than the Ruffer one, but they're very, I mean, they're pretty similar brushes right there. This one here I believe is another one of their prototypes. This is the S01, so this one doesn't have a uh, refer on it, but I'm going to compare it to the Wayne Goss 26S. This is the synthetic version, but um, very similar in shape right there. This is synthetic. This is a uh, natural bristle brush, and I really like this one as well. Again, the hairs are a little bit more firm. They, they place product a little bit more precisely and they blend it out a little bit quicker. I forgot to mention the only thing that Refer wants in exchange for sending out like free prototypes is for you to type your honest opinion on their brushes because again they're trying to create the perfect brushes um, for their consumers. I think it's a really neat concept on top of the fact that these are some very very nice brushes so again this is the brand right here. Definitely worth, worth uh, checking out. And then I placed an order on the ColourPop website. And I just wanted to try one of these So Juicy Plumping Glosses. Um, they have a slight uh, minty feeling on the lips. So that's the plumping aspect of it. Um, but they reminded me of the... Remember the old school Lancome Juicy Tubes? And it was just kind of bringing back nostalgia for me. <laughs> so I got this one here. And it's the shade Roundabout. It's just a really pretty pinky nude color. It's got a pretty decent amount of pigment and I'll probably just buy the one because I really have no business again buying gloss but um, I have worn this actually quite a bit I've just been throwing it on it feels nice and nourishing on the lips and has that nice hint of nude color and then I got two of the jelly much eyeshadows and I've never tried the jelly much eyeshadow I just like to say that I just like to say jelly much <laughs> But I've never tried these eyeshadows and when I first got them, um, my mom was there when I was opening up the package and I said, come here. And so I tapped on some of these, the Jelly Munch on her eyes and it looked so pretty on her. And then she went and looked in the mirror and she was like, how much were those? I kind of want to get some. <laughs> but the way that I've used both of these is just uh, tapping them over the lid over kind of a corresponding shadow. And it adds just the prettiest like high shine little sparkly aspect to the lids. I think they're really nice products. I'm probably going to buy some more at some point. But this one here is the Big Ego 19B4 in the Jelly Much. And it does have this little stopper on there. So this is what the product looks like. Let me get some on my hand here. Kind of blend it out a bit. Isn't that just, I just think it's so pretty. I'm going to buy some more of them. I mean, have to, right? And this is that, this is that type of color too that has that really pretty multi-dimensional kind of purpley feel to it. I just think it's so pretty. So that's the color Big Ego. And then the other one I got is from the Disney Villains collection. It's called Perfectly Wretched 19C1. This is the one I think I tapped on her eyelids the day that I got it. It's just a super stunning kind of a champagne color. Did I get enough on there? So pretty. So that one is perfectly retched. That's just stunning. And then I also purchased the Sweet Talk Pressed Powder Palette. This packaging is so pretty. It's just so pretty. The palette has got one Super Shock Shadow. This is the first palette that they released that has one of the Super Shock Shadows in it. That's 0 0.05 ounces and there's also, I believe, um, two pressed glitters in here and then the rest are the pressed powders. Those are 0 0.03 ounces per shade. So this one right here is your uh, Super Shock Shadow and then these two right here are the pressed glitters. Uh, for mattes you've got Catch Me, Work It, Meadow, Dream Maker, I-C-Y-M-I. Do I know what that means? I don't think I do. <laughs> West Side and Feel Free. And then you've got two uh, shimmer shades, which are Melody and Garden Date. Um, I've really been enjoying this palette. I've enjoyed every look that's come out of it. I love how there's kind of different textures in there in terms of mattes, shimmers, glitters, and then that Super Shock Shadow. This is just a really pretty spring uh, palette. And I get along with ColourPop eyeshadows really, really well. I think they're some of the 
um, highest quality affordable shadows on the market. So that's the top row. And then this is a pressed glitter. It's a matte. Another pressed glitter and a matte. Oh well, these glitters will swatch. Let me swatch pretty good. And then this bottom row. Right there. Just a really fun, pretty palette for spring. I hope that that Super Shock Shadow doesn't dry out a whole bunch in there, but it feels pretty, um, it feels pretty creamy though. So that is the ColourPop Sweet Talk Pressed Powder Palette. I also got the Just My Luck Palette. This one comes in a hard plastic packaging. Um, I love green eyeshadows. They kind of released this one around St. Patty's Day. And it's just a super fun green palette. You've got Chances Are, Kiss My Hass, <laughs> Act Natural, um, and Charmed, which are true mattes. And then you got Mo Bamba, which is one of those mattes infused with uh, shimmer sparkles. And then you've got kind of four metallic shades, which are these guys. This Mary Jane shade is just popping, man. So let me go ahead and swatch these guys for you. Again, I, I really love um, my ColourPop shadows. And then these ones. Isn't that chartreuse, like lime green, so stunning? This last one, just kind of a brownish green, khaki maybe, <laughs> right there. So that is the Just My Luck palette. And then lastly, I purchased two items from the Too Faced Natural Lust collection. I believe it's their spring collection. Um, I am head over heels for this packaging, both the actual packaging and the box packaging. It's going to be extremely hard for me to throw this away. <laughs> this is the Too Faced packaging that I feel like we all know and love. And I hope that they stay down this road because I think this is absolutely stunning. So I got the Too Faced Natural Lust Bronzer, which is a satin dual tone bronzer. This is a lot larger than I had expected it to be. It's um, and From Recollect, I think it's the biggest bronzer that Too Faced has come out with. Um, 0.63 ounces of product in here. Uh, the top of this is stunning. It's kind of like a, it feels like a cardboard kind of inlay in there. And then this was so difficult to like put my brush in and start messing up, but the embossing in here is just stunning. Um, I will say that because of the way that it's pressed, probably due to the embossing, that it's pressed a, a little bit harder than some of the other Too Faced bronzers that are kind of in their permanent range. Um, I use it with a more firm, dense brush and I don't have any problem picking up product. This is the bronzer that I have on my face today. Um, it shows up really well. I use the MAC 125 SE brush. This is one of my favorite bronze contouring brushes right here and I just swirled it around in the product and it did pick up quite a bit of product. I initially kind of went in hard thinking that I was going to need to go in really hard and it picked up a ton of product. I had to like buff out my bronzer quite a bit because I put too much on. But I think if you use a fluffier, softer synthetic, you're going to have a hard time picking up this product because again, it is pressed a little bit harder. And then there's a pretty mirror in there as well. So I'm going to swatch the Peacock and then I'm going to swatch this. It's like a, it's got a satin super, super fine shimmer in it. And I'm going to swatch both of them. I just mixed the two shades together when I used it today. So there's the, the light one the other shade and then the mix together right there. Here's a little size comparison. This is the Chocolate Gold Soleil which has 0.28 ounces of product in there. So there's over twice as much bronzer in this one as this guy right here. So for size wise. I forgot to swatch this lipstick. I got this Villains uh, lipstick from Colourpop and it's what I have on my lips today and it's the shade Hades. And I love this packaging. It's super cute. This is the only lipstick that I got from the collection. It says Villains embossed on the bullet. 
but uh, I also get along really well with their lipsticks. I think it's a pretty color. I've got it on <laughs> with uh, Charlotte Tilbury's Lip Cheat in Iconic Nude. So that is the shade Hades uh, from the ColourPop Disney Villains collection. And then lastly, this is the Too Faced Natural Lust Eyeshadow Palette. I'm gonna go ahead and compare it to the uh, Natural Love Eyeshadow Palette that they came out with. I wanna say that was has been like two years ago now. Um, but again, this packaging is so stunning. So this palette contains 30 eyeshadows that are 0 0.02 ounces per shade, which is really small in terms of the amount of products that you're getting per shade. But there are 30 shades in here for a total of 0 0.60 ounces of product. And then you have got a mirror in there. And then here are your shadows. This is the palette that I have on my eyes today. And I've worn this, I want to say I've worn this almost all week, except for yesterday because I wore the Urban Decay and Game of Thrones collection yesterday. I think that the foily shadows are just a little bit more foiled than the one that came out prior. And there's a little bit more contrast in terms of shades. You've got a little bit more spicier, like you got this pretty like olive green and then this darker um, berry shade. There's some deeper browns in here. And then you've got a turquoise. There's just a little bit more variety and depth in terms of light and contrast in here compared to the other one, which I'm gonna do a side by side so you can kind of see but this is a beautiful palette I mean are there a ton of shades that you've never seen from Too Faced no <laughs> so if you have like you know a ton of Too Faced palettes like I do you've probably seen these shades several times but I do feel like the formula of these shadows is a bit nicer than some others so if you're looking for a good neutral pretty palette this this is a nice palette so let's swatch them I'll just swatch them down in rows I do wish there was a little bit more than 0 0.02 ounces of product in there, but I suppose it is what it is. There's the first four. Then let me grab this one. So that is the first row or column, I guess. And the second column. You got a ton of mattes in here too, a ton of good transitions, good brow bones, good crease colors, and a ton of good shimmer shades. I think it's overall a really well-rounded neutral eyeshadow palette. And then this color, this shade is so pretty. And then this next row. And this guy. And then this next column. I'm gonna run out of arm here, I just know it. And then let's do this one. Ah! I'm gonna let you guys see all these swatches. I gotta wipe them off because I don't have enough room for the other columns right there. And then this column, this shade is so stunning too. I feel like the shimmers in here are just a little bit more poppin' than the old palette. A little bit more shiny and whatnot. This turquoise. And then this last row over here. Right there. And then the last one is a matte black. Right there. 
pretty nice, right? Pretty nice. And then here is a side-by-side -side of the Natural Love, which is the older one, and then the Natural Lust over here. So you can see there's a little more, more spice to the new one compared to the old one. A little bit more fun colors, a little bit more dimension stuff. So It does say that the bulk is made in the USA and it's assembled in the Dominican Republic. Um, in case you're curious, but I just like to stare at the packaging because I think it's so pretty. But um, this is a good buy. I purchased both the Natural Lust Bronzer and Palette off of Sephora, but I've also seen it on the Ulta website. And then it's on TooFaced.com as well, which their shipping is so low. So I was like, I'm not going to buy from there. So that's everything for my haul today. I do have the new Urban Decay Game of Thrones collection. They sent it to me and I nearly fainted when I opened the box. <laughs> and I posted a picture on Instagram and a ton of you guys wanted me to do a video on that collection. And it's such a fun collection. So I'm going to try to do that tomorrow. Um, I probably won't be able to edit it tomorrow. but So hopefully Monday or Tuesday I can get that up for you guys. It's so pretty. It gives me all the feels. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.